Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh, and in this video, we'll start out on a new topic called cross decomposition, and we'll look at the intuition behind partial least squares, uh, and we'll dive a little bit deeper into uh, the algorithm PLSWTA on which these methods are based in scikit-learn implementation, and also mention how. Uh, as the slight differences in the SVD regression and canonical correlation analysis with the W2A algorithm. And these are two papers. The first paper is the main paper on which this video draws on. So the algorithm, the W2A algorithm that you will see is from this paper. So if you need more information, definitely want to check this paper out. And the second paper is a reference that shows one application in the area of uh, biology where uh, partial least squares can be used. So what is partial least squares? So it's a regression method and the difference being that in this case the input features could be collinear or they could be correlated with each other and the output targets there could be one or more targets and the way this method uh, works is uh, it reduces the number of training features into few uncorrelated features we'll see the intuition behind that in a moment and then performs a least squares on these correlated features so why and when and why would we use the partial least square so as I already mentioned if there are if the features are correlated and we'll see examples of those so let's say we have uh, features one two and three they are correlated what we would usually do is we'll remove two of those three features uh, uh, before we input those features to a training model however in this case uh, we can use all three features uh, in the training model and the second point is uh, if the number of features is more uh, than the number of samples so if it's like a wide data set uh, so number of columns is more than number of rows then this method would be applicable applicable in those cases and if you think about the applications of pls uh, these are the majority of the applications that i could find were in the area of chemistry uh, related to pharmaceutics, food industry, polymers and plastics. And we'll do uh, a project on this in the uh, in coming up videos. So uh, for now, let's look at an example of uh, quality of apples. So if you think about it, the apples, quality of apples could be dependent on all these features would be water, manure, sunlight, temperature, soil aeration, soil pH, growth rate, and even more, there could be different types of manure, maybe A, B, C, D, and e some of these could be correlated with each other. So for example, here, if we have more manure, then the growth rate could be higher. So these two could be correlated. Again, if the sunlight is better, then maybe it helps in growth of the plants and uh, does improve the quality of apples and so those two could also be correlated and on the and, and on the also if you look at the targets we have different uh, targets sugar content water content color shape etc flavor one two three four so uh, there could be correlation on this side also in the target area and uh, thus what the pls does is it helps us uh, take into account these interactions between the uh, features and the output targets and use those interactions to come up with a model and if you have seen principal component analysis before if you have not that's perfectly okay uh what the main central idea is you if you have a data set such as shown here let's say water and manure you have two features and what 
we want to do is reduce this number of features to just one feature such that that one feature explains uh, what these two features are trying to explain together so instead of using two features we could just use one feature and that's also called as dimensionality reduction and the way in this case you would do that is you would find the direction in which the spread of the data points is the largest so if, as we can see the data is more spread out along the blue arrow rather than the red arrow as shown here and so you draw this arrow and then we project all the points on that arrow and that's the new feature we get and so that is the eigenvector and that's the first principal principal component that we use that we can use as a feature to train a model now in this case this is unsupervised uh, approach uh, in the sense that when we are performing this uh, dimensionality reduction or trying to find the um, direction in which the data spread is the largest to find a new feature we do not include the target and uh, our target data in this and that's one difference when we talk about uh, when we talk about the partial least squares in this case we do account for the target information and how do we do that uh, we'll see that in a minute and in this case then what we find is a singular vector and we treat that singular vector as a new feature for training the model so this is also a type of dimensionality reduction method uh, in which uh, the biggest difference is that uh, we do account for the target uh, along with the features and we do account for the interactions between those so mathematically speaking we if we have a feature matrix x we it is decomposed into or it is decomposed into uh, these x scores and x loadings plus error and then the target matrix is also decomposed into y scores and y loadings and then these are tuned based on the diagonal matrix and so here this is a rough illustration of, of uh, what how the process works so we have the feature data points uh, features on in orange dots and we have the targets in the blue dots the idea is to find these vectors u r and v r for features and targets then project these data points on those targets and this helps us find the scores and loadings uh, uh, in subsequent steps and then as uh, talked as we talked about in the on the previous slide using the diagonal matrix we can tune the x score and y score to find the perfect fit and i know that's not perfectly clear but we'll look at the algorithm w2a to get more insight into how this works and this important point to remember he here is that because we are using the y target in this particular uh, process of modeling this would be a supervised uh, learning method so back to this example of uh, apples in farm uh, here uh, we talked about this earlier so we have features uh, which could be correlated then we have targets which could be correlated and there could be interaction between these two so all that is okay in partial list squares so the features the dimensions of the features uh, could be n by d matrix and the d can be large so the number of columns could be more than the number of rows and the target is n n by t matrix uh, so again the number of columns in t could be uh, a lot more than the number of rows another point to remember is that either of these two blocks so either the features or target 
they could contain uh, binary uh, columns such as shown here flavor could be ones or zeros flavor two could be again ones or zeros and so on now let's uh, talk about the algorithm uh, which is pls w2a that's mentioned also in the scikit docs it it is the w2a stands for the world's two block mode a pls and that is uh, derived from herman world's uh, algorithm which is two block mode a partial least squares so it's renamed in that in the manuscript paper that's uh, cited below in on this slide but the first step is to standardize the data you could zero mean the data and then uh, the idea is to find one component at a time so it's an iterative process we start uh, with the first uh, first step here and then uh, what we have is a feature matrix x and we have the target matrix which is y then we use those two matrices to find the cross variance matrix so variance it's a covariance matrix but because we are now taking a dot product between the features and the target which we have never done before on uh, in the pcr you wouldn't you wouldn't do this so here we can uh, perform a dot product of the target and features to find the cross covariance matrix and then that helps us find the components the principal component it it gives so if we use the svd uh, we get ur uh, we get ur and that's the left singular vector for c and then we get vr which is the right singular vector for c and we can check how those vectors if the vectors are good by if and checking if they satisfy these conditions for example u transpose u and v transpose v should be equal to one and then once we have the those vectors u r and v r singular vectors we can then find the scores by this relation we are uh, dotting them again with the features and we are with the targets and we get uh, the psi and omega as scores and then uh, we regress x and y on the scores to find the loadings as shown here so the gamma and delta are the loadings uh, that are based on uh, based on the scores that we have and the features and the target values that we have so once uh, we have the loadings then we can calculate this sum uh, which we saw in one of the very first slides and update the feature matrix and update the target matrix by subtracting those values and after that if we check this condition if the dot product of x and y again is zero then we stop there else if the rank is what we need we stop otherwise uh, if that's not the case then we go back for the next uh, component we are going back in the loop and we go back to step three again here and we use the new x matrix that we found after subtraction and then repeat this entire process so uh, those were the steps if you are confused uh, i'd suggest going through this again or, or walking through uh, uh, reference cited below i'll also put up a code on uh, on the blog which uh, walks you step by step through this particular code and it is uh, based on the source code from scikit-learn so that uh, could help you understand uh, how uh, these uh, algebra works in this particular uh, algorithm next the pls svd uh, the difference here is that there are two differences 
uh, listed in the docs. So the first one is that the singular decomposition is compo computed only once. Uh, in the previous case, we are iterating through it multiple times, but here this is computed only once, and the biggest singular values are stored as as weights. That's with the uh, PLS SVD. And then with PLS regression, uh, if the NIPALS algorithm is used, that's the nonlinear iterative partial least squares. Now, before we get into this, uh, just want to mention that when uh, performing PLS in scikit-learn for regression, there are options of two algorithms. One is NIPARS, and then the second one is SVD. And they, I think this is the default algorithm. So the difference here then is uh, the values for the vectors UR and VR are not normalized. And then the targets Y are computed for the projection of X, and that is the psi instead of projection of Y, that is omega. Next, let's look at canonical correlation analysis. So here the weights are uh, calculated the same way as the PLS canonical. Uh, however, the uh, the inversion of x transpose x and y transpose y needs to be calculated, and therefore this method could be unstable if the number of features is more than the number of samples. And here is a summary of the cross decomposition. Uh, methods available with scikit-learn we have the pls canonical regression svd and cca and these are the uh, general method ways in which you can call that method uh, where we can specify the number of components in each of these and below in this table these are the methods that can be used along with them for example we can call on fit fit transform uh, get params inverse transform predict score which is the r2 score set params and uh, transform uh, except for pls svd uh, instead of just in these three are not there uh, other for others uh, all the methods are available and in this case uh, the transform would give you uh, the a new set of, of features that would be lesser so those would be the principal components uh, for the entire uh, set of features so if you have 100 features and if you specify just two n components then uh, here uh, the output would be just two columns and in the code snippet uh, the implementation is standard scikit-learn we have the library which is uh, sklearn.cross underscore decomposition so here we can import the method pls canonical and then these are we have the x train now y train if you see there are three columns instead of just one column and then uh, with pls canonical again we can specify the number of components perform the fit and then uh, predict on the test set so that was it for this video i hope in this video you got at least some intuition about what is partial least uh, least square regression and the algorithm w2a that we looked at and also instances when you would want to use uh, the pls method to perform regression and the importance of how collinear features are okay in this particular method when we are talking about uh, pls in the next video we'll look at uh, implementation in scikit-learn and see how each of these methods can be used if you have any comments or suggestions please let me know in the comment section below i hope to see you all in the next video thank you